In this video, I'll give you a complete guide to using ChatGPT for Amazon KDP. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Sean and I've built and sold a seven figure KDP business and now I'm building my new KDP account. So if you want no BS publishing advice from someone who is actually doing it, then make sure to subscribe. And if you want a completely free training on how I built a KDP business to this level, then the link to the training is in the description below. So there are many ways to use ChatGPT for Amazon KDP, but these strategies that I'm about to show you are the most useful ones. So if you master this, you'll literally save thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours of your time. So let's get right into it. So let's start with the basics. For those who don't know anything about ChatGPT or AI, it's been a hype the past couple months or so. But you know, if you're curious what ChatGPT is, ChatGPT is a AI tool that you can ask anything and it answers it for you. It is free to sign up and use by just going to this site, chat.openai.com. Now the benefits of using ChatGPT specifically for our Amazon KDP business is that now we can create high quality books faster and cheaper because a lot of the tasks that we normally would outsource to a freelancer that we would have to pay for, now we can do it ourselves using ChatGPT. Uh, a lot of the things that we do ourselves can be sped up and we can do it quicker because of the help of ChatGPT. So it's really, really beneficial utilizing AI in our publishing business. So before we move forward on actually how to use ChatGPT, I just wanna go over the best practices, which is to use AI as a tool, not as a replacement. So a lot of people would just 100% rely on ChatGPT, literally just copy paste the content and then just slap it on a book and publish it. And that's not what you wanna do because you're not adding any of your own input, right? You're just using what the AI generates uh, as a book, but there's nothing of your personal touch, your own stories, experience, nothing added into it. So what you wanna do instead is to use it as a tool, but you're still creating the book yourself just with the help of ChatGPT. So you always wanna rewrite the content that it generates, always wanna add your own stories, input, change up you know, the information to apply to your uh, specific book, right? And never ever copy paste it. And you also wanna fact check because a lot of times the content that AI generates is still not accurate. And this might change in the future, but for now that is the case. So another thing we should keep in mind is the ethical consideration. So a lot of people will say writing a book with ChatGPT is unethical, it's scammy, it's not right. Right. However, if you use ChatGPT, but still maintain the authenticity in your voice, once again, because you're not just relying on the content that is generated by ChatGPT, you're not copy pasting it, right? You start off with getting the help of ChatGPT, but you're still, you know, revising the content so that it is still your voice. It is still your information. Then that's not an issue. However, it's important that you do that, right? Another thing is every innovation felt unethical at first until it was normalized. So if you think about it, you know, people started writing books and then after a while, there was enough books to create a library. And now people were able to go to the library as a resource to learn new information. And then some people started using some information that were already found in other books that they found in the library and then started writing new books. And obviously I might be wrong here because I wasn't alive back in the days, but I'm pretty sure those people who started using some other books in the library as a reference uh, to their books uh, were having issues of other people saying, hey, that is unethical, you're stealing content content, uh, this and that, you shouldn't do that, right? And then, you know, it became normalized and then the internet came out. And now people started using internet research as a resource to write books. And then I'm pretty sure the same thing happened is a lot of people are saying, oh, that is unethical. You shouldn't do that. Uh, it is scam, right? And, you know, it became normalized and now everybody's doing it. So based on that, using AI as a resource to write our books is a new thing that, you know, people are saying that it's unethical, but I am pretty sure over time it's going to be normalized as well. All right, so is KDP okay with AI content? Well, recently KDP officially came out with a statement regarding AI content, and they basically classify the AI content in two different ways. The first one is AI generated, and this is when you go and generate the actual book content with AI, and then you go and modify that. Even if you apply substantial modification, it is still considered AI generated. Compared to that, AI assisted is something like you write the book yourself or you create the images yourself, and then you use AI to edit that later on. 
Now, this is considered AI assisted. And as you can see, it says right here that it is not necessary to inform KDP of the use of such tools or processes if you're using AI as assistance rather than generation. So as of now, KDP is simply asking whether your content is AI generated or not. When you're uploading your book on KDP, there is an option right here that you have to select uh, whether it is yes, you did generate the content using AI or no, you only use AI for assistance rather than generation. Uh, or you didn't use AI in general. So there's this option that you have to choose. Even if you select yes, that the content was generated by an AI, KDP is not punishing anyone for selecting this. There's nothing that's happening. It is simply an option that you have to select when you're uploading. However, that is the case right now, but we don't know what's gonna happen in the future. In the future, I feel like what's going to happen is KDP might start adding a label on the book's product page that indicates this book was generated by an AI or this book was written by an AI. And obviously, if you have that label on your product page, then you're gonna lose a ton of sales because I'm assuming most people don't really wanna buy books that were created by an AI. So this is something that I've been saying and preaching for a very long time in all my previous videos for months and months and months, ever since ChatGPT came out. And I always preach that you want to focus on using ChatGPT or using any other AI tool as a assistance to your creation, but not as a replacement. You don't want them to do all the work because once again, that's gonna fall under AI generation. But if you're just using the tools as an assistant to come up with ideas, but you're actually writing the book, then that is AI assistance. And that should be the goal where you want to select no right here when you're uploading. So that's exactly what you're going to learn in this video. All the prompts and all the tips and strategies that you will learn here will fall under AI assistance and not AI generation. So with that being said, let's go into the actual chat GPT tutorial on the most useful ways to use this tool to speed up your KDP process. So the first one is setting up the chatbot. So instead of asking a prompt immediately, it's better to provide context and initial information for a better response. So let me show you what I mean. An example of setting up a context is something like, imagine you're a travel advisor, a customer is looking to plan a vacation. Once you say that, then your question would be based on their interest in adventures and relaxation, what destination would you recommend? So you're setting up a context that the ChatGPT bot is a travel advisor, okay? Another example context is you're a fitness coach and your client has hit a plateau in their progress. The question is, can you suggest some advanced training techniques to help my client overcome their fitness plateau? Now, how can we apply this to KDP? An example context would be something like, you are to act as an expert writing coach for nonfiction and fiction books. I will ask you various questions related to the book production process. Make sure to respond with answers that are detailed and creative. Type yes if you understand. All right, so now we are setting up the AI that they are a expert writing coach, both for nonfiction or fiction. If you're doing only fiction, then you should just put fiction here. If you're doing only nonfiction, you should specify here. So you don't have to use the exact same prompt. I'm just giving you an example here, okay? So you can see that that is the exact prompt that I asked here. Uh, and now ChatGPT is primed so that we can ask our next prompt. So now let's walk through each step in the publishing process that you can use ChatGPT for. So as an example, let's say I want to write a book on decluttering. The first thing we can do is to use ChatGPT as a way to get topic ideas. So an example prompt would be something like provide 10 related niches of decluttering. And obviously you would replace that with whatever your book topic is. Or another prompt would be niche down decluttering into 10 subtopics. So these two prompts would be very useful if you're trying to get related niches and keywords for your main topic. So that's what I asked here, provide 10 related niches of decluttering. And I got minimalist living, digital decluttering, decluttering for families, decluttering for seniors, emotional decluttering, workspace organizations, and a few more. I also asked niche down decluttering into 10 subtopics. And now I got wardrobe decluttering, kitchen and pantry organization. So these are good chapter ideas as well as, you know, perhaps you can add these keywords in the subtitle or the seven backend keywords if you want to add it to. Uh, digital photo and media decluttering, paperwork and document decluttering, sentimental items and keepsakes, and a few more. So the next way to use ChatGPT is for title creation. Now that you got the keyword and some sub keywords for your book, it's time to craft a title. Here are some useful prompts. So useful title prompts number one is for getting additional keywords for SEO. Here's a prompt. It is important to add additional keywords in my book title to be discovered. What are 10 search terms that are used when searching for a book about topic on Amazon? So that's what I asked here. And just a heads up that I also said, ignore the previous conversation because if you don't say this, ChatGPT sometimes answers based on 
the previous conversations and uh, the answer gets all messed up. So it's good to say this once in a while if you want to ask a completely new question uh, like this in this case. So after entering this prompt, I got here are the relevant keywords for your book title that you can add, uh, such as decluttering methods, organizing your space, minimalist living guide, tidying up strategies, clutter free home tips, streamlining your life and a few more. So these are actually really good keywords if you want to add it into your subtitle. Once again, seven back end keywords. Uh, obviously, some of them are trademark like Komari method. You don't want to do that. But if it's generic keywords, you can definitely add it in your title. Now, the next prompt is to actually generate the book title. So a useful prompt would be give me five book titles incorporating the main keyword in the title and the sub keywords in the subtitle. The main keyword topic. So the main keyword is the keyword such as decluttering or whatever your book topic is. And the sub keywords are the sub keyword that we just found from the last prompt, right? So we can enter that in here. And then we'll say something like make sure to use copywriting to make the title and subtitle sound as attractive as possible. So based on the last prompt, I saw that organizing your space is related to decluttering. I like that keyword. So that's what I put in the sub keywords here. Okay. And then I also gave them the main keyword, which is decluttering. And I got this response right here in some potential titles. So we got effortless decluttering, the subtitle master the art of organizing your space for lasting tranquility. Second one, decluttering unleashed, transform your life by organizing your space with proven methods, radiant spaces, decluttering for joy, discover the magic of organizing your space and embracing a joyful life. The Zen of decluttering unlocks serenity through masterful techniques of organizing your space. So I actually like the title of the Zen of decluttering. But what I recommend is you don't just copy paste it. Perhaps, you know, you can go with the Zen of decluttering, but change up the subtitle a little bit, perhaps mix and match it. At least don't just copy paste straight up from ChatGPT. So now that we got the book title, we can go on and create the book outline. So I got a few prompts you can use here. One is to generate pen name ideas. So a prompt would be give me 10 pen name ideas for a topic. So in this case, decluttering book list five people name and five brand name. And you can change this up. If you just want a brand name, you can just say, give me five brand names or 10 brand names. All right. So after asking that, I got this response. So for the people name, I got Evelyn Stone, Nathan Brooks, Aria Mitchell, Oliver Bennett, Isabella Reed. For the brand names, I got Simply Life Guys. I actually like that. Clutter Free Expertise. Harmony Haven Publishing, Tidy Nook Solutions, Pure Space Press. So I like the Tidy Nook Solutions and Simplify guys. As well as for the people name, it doesn't really matter too much, but I will probably go with Evelyn Stone. All right, so next you can use ChatGPT to create author bio, which you can use a prompt. Please create a professional author biography for an author of decluttering books or whatever topic books based on the following information and you will enter these information which are the author name author information which are the basic demographic as well as the passion and experience and the mission statement so you can see that i filled that out right here so the author name is evelyn stone author information is that she's in her 40s mother of two the reason why i put this is because my main audience in the decluttering niche is most likely more geared towards females, uh, mostly busy moms. So that's why, you know, put this demographic right here uh, for the passion and experience. I put years of experience in decluttering, started decluttering to deal with her own messy house and stress. Now she shares what she learns in her book. So you just want to put something that is relatable to your audience here. And for the mission statement, once again, something relatable, such as to help other busy moms to live a clutter free life. OK, so after that, I got this author bio from ChatGPT, which is Evelyn Stone, a seasoned expert in the art of decluttering, has been transforming lives through her passion for organization and her profound understanding of the challenges faced by modern families. With two vibrant children of her own and a zest for simplifying life, Evelyn has emerged as a guiding light for busy mothers seeking to reclaim their spaces and find solace amidst the chaos. So this is pretty good, right? Obviously, I'm not going to read the entire thing, uh, but you once again, don't just copy paste this, you know, just change it up. Like if they're making exaggerated claims or if they're saying, you know, you're a doctor or having some kind of title when you're not, uh, unless you can back this up by hiring an actual ghostwriter uh, that is a actual doctor. In my case, I would probably want to find a ghostwriter that is actually in my demographic, which is a busy mom experience with decluttering because we do want that kind of congruency. But just make sure to edit the bio based on that. All right, so now we can get the actual book outline, which the prompt is a little long, so you can pause this video and uh, take notes on this. And this is the same prompt on ChatGPT uh, dashboard, but you can see that I asked for create a detailed eight chapter book outline for a decluttering 
book titled The Zen of Decluttering, Transform Your Life by Organizing Your Space with Proven Methods, make sure to include the following. And the reason why I put these information here is because I want to control the output from ChatGPT as much as possible. So the book should have an introduction, eight body chapters, and a conclusion. Avoid repeating the same information throughout the book. Start each chapter, not including the sub chapters, uh, with a hook that sets the chapter up, such as a relevant quote, interesting facts, statistics, etc. Focus on novel ideas rather than basic information. Focus on actionable steps rather than just facts. Break each chapter down into five subchapters. This is very important. Same as this one, expand each subchapters with three bullet points. Include as much detail as possible. And then this one I got from Katie Spy, which just makes it easier for us to read, which is the format. So use markdown formatting such as headings, bullet points, number lists, etc. Okay. So based on that, I got this output, which I got to be honest, it's crazy good. So we got the introduction, we got the hook, okay? And then we have the sub chapters within the introduction, which is the power of decluttering, explaining it a little more, embracing the Zen approach, your journey begins. Now we got chapter one, which is the hook. Did you know the average household contains over 300,000 items? And then now we got the sub chapters, which are the five part sub chapters, each one broken down into three different bullet points, exploring the main topics within the sub chapters. So it's like crazy because now the writer can just go and follow this step by step and they don't have to do much research right everything is pretty much laid out and I just saved you a ton of money and a lot of time because now you don't have to go and pay someone to do this and you can spend a lot less time creating your outline because you can do this very very easily with ChatGPT but you can see that they basically created a whole uh, five chapters so it didn't go up to eight chapters so I can just give another prompt saying something like you know can you complete the previous prompt uh, and give me three more chapters. So that is how you can keep going. So that is pretty crazy, but once again, you don't wanna just rely on this. You still wanna do the traditional research process of looking at your competitors' reviews on Amazon and see what people like, what people didn't like. Take those into account and add it into your outline because the more research you can do, the more we can ensure that the book is high quality. But as a starting point, this is an excellent, excellent outline that you can start with. So now we got the book title, we got the pen name, we have the actual outline, we have the author bio as well. So we are ready to start writing the book. So in terms of the actual book writing, at the moment, uh, unfortunately, ChatGPT or any AI software is not good enough to write a full length book. And when I say full length, we're talking a full nonfiction or fiction book. So I recommend writing yourself if you are a writer, if you have the skills to do that, or use a ghostwriter. So in order to find ghostwriters, you can either post a job on Upwork or you can go use a ghostwriting company like the Urban Writers. The Urban Writers is the number one ghostwriting company uh, out there out of all the ghostwriting companies that I know of and I tested myself. So if you have a fiction package, you choose a fiction, obviously. For us, it's decluttering, it's nonfiction. So we just go to nonfiction writing package, choose a package. Typically I choose top or premium, but it's really up to you and your budget. They're all really good, okay? And then you just click on start order, send them the details, and then they will write the book for you. Typically it takes about a month or so to write a full length 30,000 word uh, nonfiction book. If you do wanna check out the Urban Writers, I do have a little coupon code where you can get a discount. So I will leave that in the description below. So although you can't really use AI to write the entire book at the moment, once you do get your book back from the ghostwriter, AI can help you rewrite some sections to improve it. So that's what we're gonna talk about next, which is this prompt. Rewrite the following text to make it sound more X and less X. So you wanna replace the X with some descriptive words like formal, informal, enthusiastic, serious, academic, persuasive, inspirational, emotional, professional, whatever, right? But basically you're just saying, please rewrite this section uh, to make it more sound like this. So if you have a section in your book that you don't really like, you can either ask the ghostwriter to rewrite it or you can just use this and rewrite it very quickly yourself. So once your book is written, next we need to go and create a book description. So for that, this is the prompt. Once again, you can pause the screen, but this is a prompt on the ChatGPT screen. So it is basically uh, write a 350 word book description for a book titled The Zen of Decluttering, Transform Your Life by Organizing Your Space with Proven Methods, written by author Evelyn Stone use clear and powerful language. The description should follow the below structure. 
headline, an attention-grabbing statement for a question to hook the readers, uh, relate, ask two to three follow-up questions to relate to the readers and show them that you understand their pain points and that you were in the same situation as them before. Credibility section, in a few sentences, describe the author's experience in the field, relate to the common struggles reader experiences. Bullet points, acting as a copywriting expert, list eight bullet points that sells the book without revealing what is inside, and the call to action, fill in the sentence if you want to X, then scroll up and buy the book today, okay? So this is the output that I got from ChatGPT. So discover the peaceful power of an organized life. Are you tired of the constant chaos that comes with a cluttered home? Do you find yourself drowning in belongings, unable to locate what you truly need? Have you ever wondered if there's a way to break free from the stress of clutter and finally find serenity within your living space? Imagine waking up to a home that feels like a sanctuary, a place where everything has its purpose and every corner ex exudes tranquility. Anyways, guys, this is a long description, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you can see that they got the relate section. We got the credibility with over a decade of personal experience in decluttering. Uh, I understand the struggles that busy mothers encounter, right? And we also have another section in credibility, and then we have the bullet point section and the call to action. If you're ready to bid farewell to the chaos and welcome a life of calm and purpose, then scroll up and buy this book today, okay? So this is a great description as a starting point, but it's not the end product, right? So you still wanna rewrite this, and once again, you want to edit things that are not accurate, such as if your book does not actually include the things that they are promising in the bullet points, uh, like you know, learn sustainable practices that benefits both you and the, uh, both your home and the planet. If your book doesn't have this, then obviously you're gonna remove this and you know change it to something else. So this is just a template and it's not the final product. So please don't be lazy here and make sure you add your own input. All right, so those were the most useful ways to use ChatGPT for publishing. Obviously there's a lot more prompts and there's a lot more different things you can do. But honestly, what I just showed you were the 80-20 uh, when it comes to using AI for publishing. So 20% of the prompts that's gonna bring you 80% of the results. So those were the most effective ones. However, I'm constantly testing new strategies and whenever I find new strategies, I always add it into my complete publishing course, Road to Hero, but you know, I do share it on YouTube as well. So anyways, this is the 80-20. If you know how to use this, then you can pretty much create the whole book with ChatGPT, except for the writing part. So a common question that I get is, should you use AI detection tools like originality.ai? And my answer to that is, it's not 100% accurate. Originality.ai and other AI detection tools are not 100% accurate and you should not really rely on the percentage that you get. However, it gives you a good idea of whether you should edit the text more or not. So let me show you what I mean. So if I go and copy this entire book description from ChatGPT, and go to originality.ai and paste this in and click on scan now. You can see that the entire text came back as 100% AI. Now, originality.ai is unfortunately not that accurate. So, you know, sometimes a text that you write yourself will come back as 100% AI. Sometimes a AI text will come back as original. So I wouldn't necessarily rely on the actual numbers here. Although you can use it as a reference point, it's not completely useless where you can rewrite the content and then check it again. It could show up as 80% AI. So now it shows a little better sign, right? But in the end, instead of just focusing on the actual percentage that you get from originality or other AI detection software, instead what you should do is just simply ask yourself, is this content good? If it's good, if it's high quality, if you feel like it's gonna serve the customer, then it should be okay, whether it's written by AI or an actual human. What's not okay is if a content is junk, it's just fluff, it serves zero purpose, and you decide to put it up on Amazon and sell it to someone. That is way worse than having an actually good content that is written with the help of an AI. Now, originally that AI actually checks uh, for plagiarism as well, and that is probably way more beneficial than the AI detection. Uh, it's actually one of the cheapest ways to check for plagiarism. So if you're looking for a plagiarism tool, which you should always run your content through a plagiarism checker, uh, originality.ai or Grammarly is what I use as well. So if you wanna check those out, I will leave a link in the description as well. All right, so that brings us to the final due diligence process, which is to always rewrite text and make it your own. You always wanna fact check what is generated by ChatGPT. You wanna check for plagiarism, as I just mentioned, using originality.ai or Grammarly. All right, guys, that is it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you got a lot of value from this on how to use ChatGPT to 
pretty much help you with the entire publishing process. And before you go, if you are serious about building your publishing business, then consider joining my Road to Hero program. It's not just a compilation of video lessons, it's literally a coaching hand-holding program where me and our coaches is going to give you one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, weekly Q&A call, uh, private Facebook group where you can ask us questions uh, anytime and we will answer those questions to you. So we are dedicated to helping you with publishing. We got a lot of students that are succeeding making four, five, or six figures a month from their publishing business. So if you do want to check it out, the link is in the description below. You can either join the Road to Hero program directly from one of the links or there is another link where you can watch a free training and you can learn more about the program and at the end you can choose to join or not join. And if you decide not to join the program, no problem. My goal is to help you as much as I can by giving you free information on YouTube like this so that you can start making money with your publishing business and hopefully in the future once you want to take your business more seriously, once you want to scale your publishing business even further, that you come back and join our programs. So that's my goal here and hopefully you enjoyed this video. So leave a like if you enjoyed the video, uh, subscribe if you haven't yet. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.